Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today we're returning to Kanto to up the ante with the worst of Earth's team. If you haven't seen the Pokemon Emerald video with them, then I suggest you check that out first, it'll be linked in the description. Essentially, this is a uniquely typed team made up of the worst fully evolved Pokemon by base stats. So even though Ditto has a lower base stat total than Mawile, we already have the worst normal type in Smeargle, so we have to skip past the little blob. Anyway, we're really pushing the limits today to see just how good the worst of our team can be. Like last time, the team will be made up of Shedinja, Smeargle, Delibird, Unknown, Love Disk, and Mawile. This time though, we're in Leaf Green, and the rules are going to make this next to impossible. We're sticking with the classics from last time. We can't level anyone above the next gym leader or elite four members ace. We're not allowed to use items in battle, and we can't catch any Pokemon to use as HM slaves. One of the best things about the Worst Diverse team is that they can learn every HM between them. For this run though, to make things a little more interesting, we're not going to use held items either. And on top of that, the battle style will be on set rather than shift, so no free switching. This is going to be tough. Okay, with that out of the way, it's time to answer the question, can you beat Pokemon Leaf Green with the worst diverse team? Let's get into it. We've replaced Bulbasaur with Shedinja, so Gary's going to have a Charizard later on in the game, which is a little bit terrifying. Also, I've added a patch of grass to Pallet Town where you can catch Smeargle, Delibird, Unknown, Love Disk, and Mawile. The first rival battle goes off without a hitch because Charmander can't touch Shedinja, and then we're off on the road to Viridian City. We collect a parcel from the Mar and deliver it back to Oak, receiving our Pokedex and some Pokeballs. Okay, time to catch our team. On top of our starter, Doku the Shedinja, we've added 5 level 1 Pokemon. Kalo the Smeargle, Fiacla the Mawile, Cerise the Love Disk, Mirage the Delibird, and Astro the Unknown. Something important to note, Astro's hidden power is Rock-type, which isn't too bad, it's something different at least. We then spent about 30 minutes grinding everyone up to at least level 5, while I questioned exactly why I set the Pokemon to be level 1 instead. With our team up a few levels, we can take on Gary west of Viridian on Route 22. Even though both of his Pokemon are 3 levels higher than our best, I'm confident we can take him down with our team of 6. We lead off with Astro against Pidgey to take advantage of his Rock-type hidden power. Unknown isn't quite able to finish off the bird because of sand attack, so we switch into Doku even though one gust will spell the end for him. For some reason, Gary just spams sand attack with Pidgey instead of knocking out Doku, so we make it past his first Pokemon with our whole team alive. I switched into Fiacla once Charmander came in and then jumped straight back to Doku. Honestly, this battle was very confusing. I was sure Pidgey had Gust and Charmander had Ember, but they were outright refusing to use those moves on Shedinja. It was all a bit weird. Anyway, thanks to Gary's idiocy, we're able to take him down without losing anyone. A nice, solid start to our journey. Viridian Forest is our next destination, but there's nothing to trouble us in there, so let's jump ahead to our battle with Brock. Love Disc learns Water Gun at level 12, so once we reach that point, we're ready to take on everyone's favourite sidekick. One Grass or Water type move basically guarantees victory here. Unsurprisingly, Cerise one-shots Brock's level 12 Geodude and his level 14 Onyx. This wasn't exactly a tough first gym battle. The boulder badge is officially ours, and we're ready to move on to Cerulean City. After making it through Mount Moon, we run into Gary again as we try to cross Nugget Bridge. For the second time, we kick off the battle with Astro to face off against his flying type. Now a Pidgeotto at level 17 somehow, he's able to deal quite a lot of damage, but with a super effective attack, Unknown's able to take him down. Gary sends in Rattata next, and we swap out to Doku. Realising that he can't touch Shedinja, Gary switches in his starter, Charmander. After scratching the Fire Lizard, we replace Doku with Cerise, knowing that an Ember is coming. One Water Gun finishes off Charmander, and our rival brings in his entirely useless Abra. We switch into Kahlo, knowing this is one of the few battles she can actually win. Three tackles do the job, and for Gary's final Pokemon Rotata, we swap out once again, this time bringing in Fiacla. Mawile finishes the battle with ease, and for the second time, we've taken out our rival without losing anyone. This is getting pretty embarrassing for him. After crossing Nugget Bridge, we walk in on Bill doing one of his... experiments? For helping him get out of trouble, he gives us a ticket for the SSN. We then head back to the Cerulean Gym to take on Misty. I'm gonna be honest with you, the first few gym leaders aren't particularly well equipped to deal with Shedinja. 
Misty, Staryu and Starmie only know normal and water type attacks, so they can't touch Doku thanks to Wonder Guard. I still wanted to use other team members though. We lead off with Kahlo, who's added Growth and Vine Whip to her moveset, but Staryu just about gets the better of her. Fiekla comes in to finish it off, but Starmie takes her down with one Water Pulse. Then it's about time to take advantage of Doku's ability. Luckily, Starmie makes things easy by not spamming Recover, and Shedinja finishes off Misty to earn us the Cascade Badge. As we go through the destroyed house and bump into the Rocket Grunt, it occurred to me that there wasn't any way to leave Cerulean without Cut. Before this house was destroyed, anyone without the HM was trapped in the city, so I do have some sympathy for this particular member of Team Rocket. And everyone else in Cerulean, now that I think about it. Now that we're out of the prison city, we head south to Vermilion and board the SSN. Before we can do some unspeakable things with the captain, we run into Gary suspiciously leaving the captain's quarters. As always, our rival leads off with his Pidgeotto. This time around, we're taking on the flying type with our Mawile. A Mega Kick and a Bite take down Pidgeotto before he can do any damage. Gary brings in Charmeleon next, which forces us to switch out to Cerise. There's not much to this battle. Gary's pretty underleveled compared to Misty, so it's a pretty easy test. Love Disk takes down his starter without taking too much damage, and then Raticate comes in. After a charm, we go into Kahlo, but this wasn't a great showing for her. After two growths, she still can't even chip away a quarter of Raticate's health with a Vine Whip. So, we jump back into Cerise and knock him out. Then quickly wipe out Kadabra for a nice easy victory. The less said about our meeting with the captain of the SSN, the better. We got the HM for cut, that's all you need to know. Alright, let's move on to another gym leader who can't touch Doku. Surge's three Pokemon only have normal and electric type attacks, so Shedinja's on easy street. Easy, but frustrating street. Although Voltorb and Pikachu went down quickly, a combination of Double Team and Thunder Wave made the face off with Surge's level 24 Raichu incredibly annoying. This took almost four minutes. Eventually, we make it through the battle and earn the Thunder Badge. After returning to Cerulean and heading east, we stumble through Rock Tunnel in the dark and make it to Lavender Town. When we arrive, we cross paths with our rival once again. This is the first sign that battles with Gary might be getting tougher. He's dropped his Raticate and added Execute and Gyarados. Pidgeotto goes down after some teamwork from Astro and Fiacla before Charmeleon gets decimated by Cerise. Then we both do some tactical switching, which all ends up with Gyarados knocking out Mirage before falling to Fiacla. Although Execute doesn't have any super effective attacks, he manages to take out Doku with Leech Seed. Mawile comes back in to cement herself as the MVP of this battle by eliminating Execute and Kadabra. The battle is won, but it was pretty close. That's sort of how this challenge tends to go. As we're starting off with six fully evolved Pokemon, we're usually in good shape in the early game. Once other trainers start using evolved Pokemon though, the worst of our team starts to fall behind. They're still the best team going though, so we're powering through. Anyway, it's time for some slots. If you've seen the original Worst of Us team video, then you know I've had some troubles here before. I want the TM for Flamethrower, and that's going to cost 4,000 coins. I've cut down around 40 minutes of footage of me playing slots because I'm not sure you guys want to watch that. This time around, I got the hang of it pretty quickly and we actually managed to earn the coins required to add Flamethrower to Fiacla's moveset. I do want the TM for Ice Beam 2, but we don't need it right now so I'll save that for later. Also, I think I might lose my mind if we have to play slots for another hour, so it's probably safer to stop. Outside of the Celadon Gym, we run into a creepy old man staring at the women inside. Good stuff. Inside the gym, we take on Erica, but her team of three is no match for Mawile. Fiacla is sort of the ultimate foil for Erica, as she resists grass type attacks and is immune to poison moves. On top of that, she has a flamethrower to deal some serious damage. Erica's Victory Bell, Tangler, and Vile Plume are no match for Mawile, who quickly wipes them all out, earning us the Rainbow Badge. Before returning to Celadon Game Corner, we pick up some tea to satisfy the guards and open up Saffron City. After beating the Grunt and discovering the Rocket Hideout, we head straight for Giovanni to take on the Rocket Boss. With two Rock Ground Pokemon in his team, I figured this was as good a chance as any to give Kahlo the spotlight. After two growths, we attack on it with Vine Whip, and it doesn't knock him out. Not great for a 4 times effective move that's been boosted twice, but it could be worse. A second hit does the job, and two more shots knock out Rhyhorn as well. Not looking to push my luck, we bring in Fiatla to take on his Kangaskhan. 
We grabbed the team for Brick Break from the Celadon department store before coming here and taught it to Mawile, so this wasn't too hard. Giovanni is beaten pretty easily, and now that we've got the Sylph Scope, it's time to head back to Lavender Town. At the top of Pokemon Tower, we meet Mr. Fuji and... Rescue him? I mean, it's not really rescuing. He seemed kind of okay. Anyway, he gives us the Poke Flute in spite of our interference, which means we can now head for Fuchsia City. Before we do any of that though, it's time for some more slots. Half of the footage I recorded for this challenge was just me playing slots. I might have a problem. Anyway, I'd perfected it at this point, so it was just a small bit quicker. Another 4,000 coins meant we could add Ice Beam to Mirage's moveset, which should really help him out. The reason we went for Ice Beam now is to help with the rival battle coming up in Sylph Co. Four of Gary's five Pokemon are fully evolved, and his levels have seriously improved since the last time we met. It's an incredibly difficult battle that could take a few tries. Pidgeot is up first, and at level 37, it's just strong enough to survive an Ice Beam from Mirage. Although he gets in a wing attack, one Aerial Ace finishes him off. Gary sends in Charizard next, and his Flamethrower takes out Delibird before he can do anything. Cerise comes in on our side and manages to knock out Gary's starter after taking a couple of hits. Execute is brought in and levels it up again by knocking out Love Disk. We switch Doku in and Gary goes out to Gyarados. After we go into Fiatla, she's hit by Dragon Rage so we move on to Kahlo to sketch it. Unfortunately, that doesn't work out. Gyarados eliminates Smeargle and Unknown before Fiatla completes the job, leaving a 2 on 2. Execute lives through a flamethrower and knocks out Mawile. Now, Doku's one hit point is the only thing separating us from defeat. One Shadow Ball takes down Execute and makes it a one-on-one. -on -one. Gary's final Pokemon is Alakazam, and once again, one Shadow Ball is enough. Doku is the sole survivor from the Sylphco battle, and we're not done yet. Giovanni is up next. I've rarely had any trouble with Giovanni in any of these games. This isn't really any different. His team of Nidorino, Rhyhorn, Nidoqueen, and Kangaskhan doesn't really cause the worst of our team any problems. It didn't help that Giovanni seemed more interested in lowering our stats than he didn't actually dealing damage. We make quick work of the rocket leader without losing anyone. Then it's time to move on to the next gym. Before heading to Fuchsia though, we let Mirage decimate everyone in the fighting dojo. It's really much too easy for him. It's honestly a little bit shocking just how beastly Delibird can be. Then we have to wake up and subsequently knock out a Snorlax so we can make our way to Fuchsia and challenge Koga. The Fuchsia City Gym Leader specializes in poison types, so our steel type Mawile is going to be key. We lead off with Kahlo though. She's added Nightshade to her moveset, which means she can finally deal some proper damage. The main reason she's at the front of our party though is so she can sketch Toxic from coughing. Unfortunately, Kahlo goes down, but from there, the battle just got ridiculous. Once Fiatla came in, it took 5 minutes to dispose of Muck thanks to Minimize. This is probably going to be cut out almost entirely. Thankfully, Koga's last two Pokemon aren't as stubborn, so Fiatla can take them out to earn us our fifth badge. Before going after number 6, we've got to explore the nearby Safari Zone. Inside, we find the Warden's Gold Teeth, and then get HMO3 Surf for being the first person to reach the Secret House. We get another HM from the Warden after giving back his teeth. This time, it's Strength. With that done, we can head back to Saffron to take on Sabrina. The bad news for her is that only one of her four Pokémon can touch Shedinja. The good news is... we didn't make her suffer. Doku needed some help from Fiatla against Venomoth, but Kadabra, Mr. Mime, and Alakazam all went down extremely easily. I almost feel bad about this one. The Marsh Badge is ours, leaving only two more to collect. With that in mind, we have to head to Cinnabar Island to track down Blaine. The gym is locked, so we visit the Pokemon Mansion. We grab the secret key inside and then return to the gym to take on Blaine. We're massively underleveled for this battle, but we have Cerise on our side. Growlithe and Ponyta both go down to one Sir from Love Disk, but Rapidash and Arcanine both need two. Cerise has to survive through two powerful Fire Blasts to triumph, and she does just that. The Volcano Badge is added to our case, meaning only one badge remains, and we're heading to Viridian City to get it. The man serving as Gym Leader in Viridian is of course none other than the Team Rocket Leader Giovanni. So, this should be easy. 
Our levels aren't any better for this battle, but I'm confident nonetheless. Cerise easily takes care of his first Rhyhorn and Doug trio, but Nidoqueen lives through one surf and lands an earthquake. So once she goes down and Nidoqueen comes in, we switch out to Delibird predicting another earthquake. This allows us to get in a free ice beam before going down to Thrash. It doesn't matter though. Cerise can easily finish off Nidoking and then take down Rhyhorn to earn us our final badge. There is one more trainer in front of us before we can make our way to the Pokemon League though. The second rival battle with Gary on Route 22 is a difficult one. With a full team of six at his disposal, I needed to grind up quite a bit just to have a chance. Somehow, we actually made it through this battle without losing a single Pokemon. Pidgeot, Rhyhorn, Charizard, Execute, Alakazam, and Gyarados all fall to the worst of our team without taking out anyone. Victory Road is our final hurdle, but it's an easy one. We make it to the Pokemon League, and heading in, our team looks like this. Seeing as Laurelize Ace is at level 54, we got the whole team up to that point to take on the Elite Four. This is day three of me trying to beat Lorelei, and if I can't do it today, I'm probably going to call it. I really don't want to lose back-to-back -back Leaf Green challenges to Lorelei. That would not be fun. Anyway, I've got a plan. I know what needs to happen for us to make it beyond the first Elite Four member, so let's get into it. Lorelei leads off with her level 52 Dugong, and we start out with Fiacla. First off, we go for Focus Punch. If Dugong uses an attack, the move fails, so we need her to go for Hail or Safeguard. Luckily, she sets up a Hail and Mawile lands her Focus Punch. Even better, Dugong lives. If Dugong survives, then Lorelei will burn through a full restore here, allowing us to use Focus Punch again. The second hit lands and knocks out Dugong. Okay, so far, so good. Cloyster comes in next, and once again we need a non-attacking move so Focus Punch won't fail. This is pretty easy with Cloyster, who only has one attack. Through all of my attempts, whenever Hale was up, she went for spikes, so it was pretty clear what was going to happen. Unfortunately, this means we can't use Doku in this battle at all, but again, this is how it has to go. Cloyster's defense is too high to fall to one Focus Punch, but a Flamethrower should finish her off from there. Lorelei's third Pokemon is Slowbro. We won't be able to take her out with Fiat Club, but we can deal some damage. To do that though, we need to survive through Surf. Mawile lives on 3 HP and uses Crunch to take Slowbro down to about a quarter health. Fiat Club goes down, but she's done way more than we could have ever asked of her. Now it's up to the rest to see this through. The first part is pretty simple. We just have to hope Mirage's Seismic Toss is enough to finish off Slowbro. This time it is, and we're down to a 5 on 2. Lorelei's ace Lapras is out next, and predicting a Confuse Ray, we switch into Kahlo. We get lucky, and own tempo blocks the confusion. We then use Kahlo's Toxic to poison Lapras. We know Spikes is going to knock Shedinja out, so we won't have to take a hit when we bring in Mirage. When Delibird comes in, we use Attract to hopefully keep Lapras from attacking. Seismic Toss slowly whittles her health down, but she still gets the better of Mirage. Luckily, we only need to switch Kylo back in to let the poison finish the job. Jinx is Lorelei's final Pokemon, and she outspeeds Smeargle to land a finishing blow and take it down to a 2 on 1. We send in Cerise, and she uses Toxic and Surf to chip away Jinx's health before Lorelei eventually uses a full restore. Love Disk manages to take Jinx down to about a quarter health before falling to an Ice Punch. This is it. 1 on 1, can Unknown finally get revenge and take down Lorelei? Astro comes in and avoids Jinx's lovely kiss, allowing a free hidden power to finish the battle. Everything needed to go our way for us to win this battle. This was a total nightmare. I don't think this is going to get much easier though. Bruno is up next. I'm not sure I've ever gotten as lucky in a battle as I did in this battle with Bruno. I don't know if we would have won had things gone in his favour a bit, but it certainly would have been a lot closer. Obviously, Onyx was no match for Cerise, but Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, and Machamp probably should have caused some problems. A combination of Attract, Toxic, Surf, and a lot of luck gets us past Hitmonchan without taking a hit. When Hitmonlee comes in, we switch out to Doku, who he can't touch. That just prompts another change as Machamp comes in. Once again, we opt for Cerise and her combination of Attract, Toxic, and Surf. 
we also have another healthy dose of luck to help as we get past another Pokemon without taking damage. We bring Shedinja in again to take on Hitmonlee and Doku dispatches him easily. Bruno's final Pokemon is another Onix. Sadly, Cerise has to take a double edge before finishing the battle with Surf. That was the only damage we took during the entire battle. I have no idea how we got this lucky, but with Bruno down, we can move on to Agatha. The quote-unquote ghost-type member of the Elite Four leads off with a level 54 Gengar. Really, she's a poison-type trainer as her whole team is poison, but she thinks she's a ghost-type trainer, so we'll let her have it. We start with Mawile, who doesn't have much to worry about against Gengar. Two crunches deal with Agatha's first Pokemon, and she sends in Haunter next. Once again, a couple of crunches do the trick against a Pokemon who doesn't seem terribly interested in attacking. Golbat is up third, so we switch into Mirage. A couple of air cutters deal a lot of damage, but a crit ice beam one-shots Golbat to take Agatha down to two Pokemon. Arbok comes out next, and we bring in Fiatcla predicting a sludge bomb. Bite can't really do much to Mawile, so we have plenty of time to lower Arbok's special defense and then knock him out with a couple of flamethrowers. Agatha's level 58 Gengar is out last, and after a bit of switching, Mawile manages to one-shot the ghost with Crunch. With Agatha down, only one member of the Elite Four remains. The Dragon Master Lance is up last. We lead off with Kahlo against his Gyarados and poison him with Toxic before getting thoroughly destroyed by Hyper Beam. Doku comes in next to finish off Gyarados with a couple of Shadow Balls. Then Lance sends in Aerodactyl and we bring in Astro. Repeated scary faces allow us to chip away Aerodactyl's health with hidden power before he comes to his senses and knocks Unknown out. Cerise comes in to take out Aerodactyl and Lance is down to just his actual dragons. We start off with an attract against Dragonair, but our follow-up blizzard is a critical hit anyway, so it renders it pretty pointless. With that, we're down to two. Once again, we go with attract to start, but blizzard is the key to our victory. Cerise knocks out another Dragonair, and Lance is down to just his level 60 Dragonite. Unfortunately, we're out of PP for blizzard, so opt for attract instead. It's no use though, as Outrage takes down Love Disk. Doku comes in next and gets off one Shadow Ball before falling to Wing Attack. We only have two Pokemon left now, and Fiatcla's up next. Once she goes down to Outrage, it's just up to Mirage. Deli Bird vs Dragonite. A battle for the ages. As it turns out, one Ice Beam is enough. Deli Bird comes out on top, and now, only the champion remains. Of course, Gary has beaten us through the Elite Four, so our final hurdle is to beat our oldest friend and rival. Before this battle, I use all the rare candy I'd collected on Cerise, but overall, we're seriously underleveled. Gary's level 59 Pidgeot is up first, and we lead off with Fiacla. With Aerial Ace, Feather Dance, Sand Attack, and Whirlwind, Mawile doesn't have too much to worry about here. After lowering Pidgeot's special defense, we switch out to Mirage to use Ice Beam. Delibird lives through a couple of hits, and then one-shots Pidgeot. Rhydon comes out second, and we go for another Ice Beam and get lucky with a crit. I don't know if regular Ice Beam would have done enough, but I don't think it would have. I'm not going to complain though. Gary's level 63 Charizard is sent out next, and to get a free switch into Cerise, we stay in with Mirage. We get lucky as Charizard misses Fire Spin, and we land a free Ice Beam. That's as far as Delibird makes it though, as a slash takes him out. That's okay though, because we get a free switch into Love Disk, which is what we wanted. She lives through a Fire Blast and takes out Gary Starter with Surf. After bringing in Executor, we go out to Doku because he only has normal and grass type attacks. Gary then switches into Gyarados, and we go out to Fiatcla. We do enough damage for our rival to use a full restore, and then after one more crunch, Gyarados wipes out Mawile with Hydro Pump. We bring Cerise back in, and a blizzard takes Gyarados down to 1 HP and freezes him, so we should be good. Oh, no, he defrosted and destroyed us. Fair enough. Astro finishes the job leaving Gary with just two Pokemon. Unfortunately for him, neither of his remaining Pokemon can touch Shedinja. One Shadow Ball takes out Alexam, and a second finishes off Executor, winning us the battle. We've beaten our rival and become the Kanto champion. The worst of our team are inducted into the Hall of Fame, and we've officially beaten Leaf Green. No items, no held items, no overleveling, a set battle style. The rules I put in place really limited the team, 
and yet in spite of their flaws, they somehow pulled through. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.